Hey guys, welcome in. Uh, this is a new Jet Photos editing tutorial. I had a last one, but it's really kind of outdated. Um, I had it up on YouTube. It's still up there. It was mostly focusing on a GA, air GA aircraft, and I kind of just wanted to make a new one. I've got a lot of DMs about how do I edit and what's my workflow like in uh, Lightroom. So this is going to be just kind of like a brief, but overall... Uh, understanding of how my workflow goes. Now you have to understand this is just the way I do it. There's other people that do it quite different than I do. Um, I personally use Topaz uh, products as well. Um, I'll try to get through this as easy and fast as possible so you're not sitting there at your computer just watching this the whole time. But um, just a, kind of a few little starter points. I use Lightroom Classic. I used to use Lightroom, the regular Lightroom for a while, and then I kind of realized that Light, Lightroom Classic has a lot more. I think the develop the the developer module is a lot stronger. It's got a lot more options for you for your photos and so on and so forth. Um, but we're gonna kind of jump right into it. I just had a few Jeff photos that went through the queue and were screened, so I have some spots that are open, so I thought maybe I'll take a little moment here to kind of edit uh, a photo I took down in Florida, and I'm still kind of like filtering through all the photos down there. So uh, without further ado, this is the photo we're going to be editing. Now a lot of people ask, you know, what do your photos look like before they're edited? Well, this is pretty much it. I mean, this is like the raw image. I always shoot in RAW, it's easier to edit in uh, Lightroom with RAW photos. Uh, don't ever shoot in JPEG, I made that mistake when I was starting out. But uh, always try to keep your photos in the RAW format. If you don't know how to do that, there's a bunch of YouTube uh, tutorials and clips that can show you how to readjust uh, your camera settings so you can shoot in RAW. But here's an Air Canada A220. Um, I was actually super stoked about getting this one. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. And in Florida at the time, so, but this is what it looks like raw photo. Um, you can see it was taken on the seventh of December, and um, but just the raw photo alone. I mean, it's this is the power of Sony, and I'm not, and you know, endorsed by Sony whatsoever. But uh, I personally just, I think they're the sharpest cameras out there that you can get. Um, Canon's got a little bit of a catch-up game but um, they're also really high up there as well and a little bit behind that story I actually used to shoot primarily Nikon all the time and that was my camera that I used but now more so when I switched over to Sony I thought you know this is just this is the way to go so thanks to all the people that helped me push towards Sony because it really has been a game changer in the uh, photo business for myself but um, so all right, so we're looking at the raw photo right now. What we're gonna do is the first thing that I do is I go into the develop module. Might look a little bit different than yours, but this is just personally how I do it. Now that we're in the develop module, I will crop it down. Now there's multiple questions that I get, and yes, some of my photos are in. I crop them in three by two. Sometimes they're four by three, and sometimes even sixteen by nine. It kind of just depends on the aircraft, how long it is, how much space you have to fill. But this, for this example for photo, I can crop it. I'll, what I'll do is I'll hit the little crop tool right here. And I will go down and probably I'll just enter a custom crop and it'll do three by two. Now nothing will change until I start actually reducing the little box right here. So once you start dragging these lines in, that's your three by two. So this will remain 3x2 the entire time. Um, so this actually isn't too bad 3x2, but I personally cannot stand the fence line and the bob wire that's there. You can't really see it, but in my personal opinion, I just don't, I'm not a fan of it. So we're going to move it to 16x9 instead. It removes that bottom portion of the fence line, and we're kind of just going to slowly crop up now. The trick to cropping is that you want the aircraft to be centered completely in the photo. However, you also need at least a little bit of work room on the sides, and you'll see that see why later. So I'll just drag this out a little bit. I have a stupid light pole here. I'll probably may or may not get rid of it. Don't know yet. It's a little, kind of annoying, but it's always easy to remove as well. 
but I'll kind of just drag it until I feel like it's just about center. What I do is I look for the um, the landing gears, uh, the, either the front or the rear landing gears. Um, so, for example, this would be way too low. If you're looking for like right in the middle there, this would be way too high. You kind of want to just right in the middle, and you kind of can play around with it a little bit, figure out where the center of the aircraft is going to be. Me personally, I think it's just going to be right about there. And now it looks like there's a little bit of too much space up here, but it's not so much the case. The front nose landing gear is right on the line. Uh, and then the back landing gear is just off to the top of the, uh, the tire there. We'll just drag that over a little bit. Now we have enough little gap right here and enough little gap right there. And what we'll do is finish the cropping. So that's the whole crop as it is. And then what we're going to do now, I used to talk about doing this before, but I used to talk about hitting auto, kind of like an easy way to do it. Auto doesn't always work. This little button right here can help out a little bit, but and it looks okay, but I'm going to show you exactly how I do mine. Now, just looking at this, I can already see some heavy vignetting um, around the landing gear, so like right around here. Probably can't see it from that angle, but if I go to the heel tool, which is right here, the little band-aid, I can actually, this is what it'll look like without it, but if you visualize the spots, this is how you get rid of dust. You can see this little glare kind of right here by the landing gear. That's the vignetting taking place. So we don't want that. So what we're gonna do, we'll go back to the original photo. And this is how I always, always, always start my photos. And this is thanks to a friend of mine, Marco, who showed me how to do this but uh, I followed his you uh, tips and tools and he kind of just uh, I already just kind of worked off of that so we'll go down to the um, exposure section section now and we'll go to 20 on the contrast we'll go down to whites and we'll do negative 10 uh, blacks will be 20 and then we're there at that now if you remember from before that little haloing that was taking a place right by the landing gear. We'll take a look again, and there's absolutely no haloing. So you want the image for jet photos to be as crisp and clear and as natural looking as possible. If I've, I've had photos where I've accidentally over-edited them, and it just doesn't really work that well. They will pick out those halos, and you can notice the halos either around different parts of the aircraft, like the landing gear, the nose gear, um, the vertical stabilizer, and so on. So. That's your basis, 20 plus on the contrast, you're going negative 10 on the whites and the blacks, and now what I will do is I will play around with the exposure a little bit so I can get it just a little bit brighter. Keep dragging, keep dragging. This is way too exposed, of course, but just about there. Now this is all just, you know, it depends on the photo and the shot. I had a lot of clouds that day and there was some good contrast in the back. That's kind of where I want it to be. Uh, we can check the tool again. Still no vignetting or haloing, so that's good. Um, I'll also go to highlights, and just depending on the aircraft, I will increase or decrease the highlights. Just about there. Shadows I'll mess around with, drag those down a little bit. Just a little bit. Whites, the aircraft delivery is primarily white, so it's kind of tough to do, but we'll drag that. There we go, that looks good to me. And blacks, even though it was plus 20, that's remember that's the base that we are starting out at. And we will drag that down just a little bit, right about there. Maybe increase exposure just a little bit more. Right, yeah, maybe that's a little too much. Ah, that looks good. All right, so now that that's all set, this is your exposure section with your contrast, your highlights, your shadows, and so on and so forth. The next step I do is I will hit the healing tool and we will look at the erase tool, which is right here. And we're going to be looking for any kind of little dots, specks of that nature. Still no vignetting. And what you can do in Lightroom Classic is if you have a MacBook, um, you could hold the space bar and then drag the photo around. If not, then you'll accidentally hit something like this. We don't want that, so just to move around the photo, 
right here there's a little spot so we'll zoom in oh i just accidentally did that myself we'll take that one off so right here it looks like there's a spot so what we're going to do is we're going to click that it's going to erase it and then we're going to just go around the photo a little bit more and there's these little couple little specks here i can probably just get rid of those one two three four i'm assuming five six kind of get rid of some of that stuff you kind of have to go right around the photo you'll notice some of the big specks that are hanging out so just look for those little dots and that's pretty much about it for this one and so we'll take the healing tool off we're looking still pretty good uh, and then we're going down to texture now this is also a standard texture 10 and clarity 10 and that's it for that section we'll keep going down and then this is important this is your lens correction so I remove the chromatic aberration enable the profile co corrections now once I do that you can see the photo will reposition itself um, to the correct profile so it kind of increases now the importance of the cropping tool is that we have some space and that's why I said earlier make sure you have some space to work with because it'll shrink in on you and the idea behind that is that you want a border a slight border around the entire aircraft so from the back of the vertical stabilizer over here to the top and on the side and on the bottom and so on and so forth this little guy right here is part of the um, fence. Not necessarily a huge issue as long as it doesn't affect uh, the photo of the aircraft. It's not obscuring the aircraft from the front or from the back. That includes landing gears, engines, vertical stabilizer, cockpit, windows, and so on. So that's not too bad. It kind of it's a little it's interesting, but I mean I'm not going to get rid of it. But pretty much that's about it for the editing process. There's not a whole lot to do. Now, if you don't have Topaz products, the, either the Topaz Denoise, the Topaz uh, Sharpen, or the, I think it's the Gigapixel or Google Pixel or something like that, um, you can go to your details down here, uh, increase your clarity and texture, uh, I wouldn't overdo it. Your sharpening, you can increase your sharpening. But if you don't have it, or if you do have it, then you can just use the Topaz Lab products. They're fine. Um, but if you don't have Topaz, I would uh, just increase the sharpening. Looks, make sure that there's not too much noise going on in the aircraft. This photo alone looks pretty decent by itself. But we're going to enhance it even more. So now this section is for the Topaz folks. So... I do the exact same thing like I just showed you. I edit the photo and I will right click it and I will edit first in Denoise. Now this is going to show you how powerful this tool really is once it pops up and there we go. And I'm going to move around the aircraft and figure out what's going on. All right. Now these are four different profiles that it's automatically selected for myself. Um, I look for the profiles that do not distort the aircraft in a bad way so this one on the bottom right here as you can see the Disney and the Pixar are a little bit distorted I'm not going to use that probably won't use that but I also check other parts of the aircraft like the Air Canada sign the logo um, the uh, what else um, let's see some of like the nose gear landing gears and so on and so forth um, the kind of thing you're looking for more so is just to get the clarity back into the photo and the fuzziness out this one's a little bit tougher because the and the aircraft was landing the um, heat distortion was kind of affecting the back of the aircraft but for the most part we're gonna go with this section right here the clear um, profile from Topaz now, if I click it and hold it down, you can see how fuzzy it is before and then after. And before 
and then after. So that's just kind of like what Topaz does. It's automatically working its magic for the uh, flight. And I've honestly never noticed that the registration used to be up here. That's interesting. Well, that's a, it's a first. Anyways, once I click that, I will select that, make sure that's the one that is selected, and I will hit apply. It'll take a little time to do its thing. Pretend you're listening to some enjoyable music while you're doing this, or whatever you want. And then what we're going to do is, after the Topaz Denoise finishes processing the image, it's going to kick it back. There we go. So now this is the original. There we go. Original and the denoise. Now after denoise, I will select the one I just used for denoise and I will edit in sharpen. So Topaz sharpen, we'll edit that. Give it some time to work. Ah, that's interesting. Okay. So we're going to just, <laughs> interesting, it's kind of kicked me out. I think it's because I had an update. All right, so sorry about this, guys. I don't know why it's doing this. Well, hopefully it logs in correctly. Looks like it did, so that's good. All right, well, that was a little bit of a hiccup, so we're not going to mess with that too much anymore. Now, here's the power of Topaz Sharpen. All right, so this is before. This is after. Now, notice the registration and the Airbus logo right here. If we click before, it gets a little fuzzy, and after, it gets a little sharp. Now, this one's a little funky just because I don't like the way the Airbus looks, but the 2022 Disney Pixar looks good. This one is a little bit better. This is too sharp. As you can see in the sharpness here, it over sharpens the window, so you kind of have to watch out for that. This one looks the most natural. This is second. Um, but now, actually looking at that now, we'll just go with this one. And what I'll do is I'll check the rest of the aircraft as well. Just going down the line. Nose gears are very, very important as you need to make sure that the registration or the numbers are clear, not faded away, not distorted. Uh, this one down here is a little too sharp for me. That one looks pretty good. This one looks pretty decent. So we're going to go with, I guess we'll go with this one again. Motion blur, very noisy. Now it has a bunch of presets ahead of time which is good because those automatically give you the best preset for the photo. But also what you can do is you can do it manually yourself. I've been personally just using the aspect of the presets to help along the way. I think it helps with my workflow a little bit more. So now we have original, we have denoise, and we have sharpen. So Sharpen's in there. Now, pretty much all the major components of Topaz uh, products are in place. And if you zoom in, that's maybe a little too much. Uh, the registration now will go from the front to the original to the last one. Here's, here's the original, just like that. And if we go to Sharpen, look how much, look at the difference. I mean, it's huge that what it can do. And it doesn't overprocess the photos unless you do it too much. Um, to the point where it looks unnatural, so we'll leave it at that. And that's pretty much it. The last step, second to last step, we're going to edit in the GigaPixel. That's what it's called. So we'll edit in GigaPixel, wait for that to load up. Bear with me on that one. Okay. So now GigaPixel, what this does is after you've denoised your photo, after you've sharpened your photo and you've fully edited it, it literally, it compresses the photo. So now we're gonna uncompress the photo and make it as large as it can be to maintain its clarity and um, appearance. Now what GigaPixel does is it does that for you. You can do it uh, two times the, the dimensions. You can do it four times. You can do it six times. 
Um, I usually stick to two or four depending on what I have, what size the photo is, what the crop is. So we'll go to 4X um, and I will just hit apply. And now this usually takes a little bit of time and it just depends on how big the photo is originally. So just bear with me on this one and we'll get the GigaPixel AI working and see how well it looks and the outcome. All right, almost there. Sometimes these, the processing um, stuff just takes forever. But I mean, overall, it's a great photo. Um, it's fully edited now. It's in the stages now where I can export to where I want to export it to. So we'll jump back into the library section of this now. We're out of the develop module. And we'll look, jump back in the library section. And now this is where we go to export. Now this is the original photo. And this is the edited photo completely from editing all the way through Topaz. And then what we'll do is we'll export this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to find where I have January, February jet photos. And I will choose that folder. Now, what the way to do it is to kind of like organize your fo photos when you're submitting these to jet photos so you don't get lo lose track and then accidentally submit the same photo twice and so on and so forth. Um, my watermarking's off, resize the fit is what I'm going to click. This is also important. Now, this is a 16 by 9, so you can do 1900 um, pixels, you can do 1600 pixels, you can do 1080. For this photo alone, I'll probably do 1600 just because I think it's sharp, but it's not to the point where it needs to be. I'll look at it from both different perspectives, but I just hit export and boom. You're all set. It's really, really simple. I mean, I hope this helps out a little bit uh, from the editing process to understanding how Topaz works and how I use it personally. And I will also do this for uh, my Instagram posts. The only difference in between Instagram posts and the Jeff Photos posts is I will not resize the fit. I will go full resolution. So I will untick the uh, resize the fit and export it wherever I want to. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If it makes sense to you, just leave a comment. You know, if you have any more questions, or if you want me to do a video on something specific on photo editing, I can show you. This is just an updated version of how I edit when I'm, or how I do my workflow when I'm editing specifically for Jet Photos, but also for Instagram posts. But thanks again for uh, watching. Um, if you liked it, like I said, give it a like, a thumbs up. Leave a comment, and if you know someone that might be interested in this, share it with them via your social media channels. And like I said, I will make some more videos. You guys give me some ideas, and I will throw it out there. Any questions or comments, shoot me over a DM on either Twitter, Skies and Beyond, or my Instagram as well for Skies and Beyond. Thanks again for watching, and have a great rest of your day.